All right, three, two, one. Thank you for joining. Shalom, everybody. I hope you're doing good. Today, we're going to be covering the knee fight. Knee fight. Okay. So, as we begin. Knife fight. <laughs> knife fight. So that's what knife fight, right? Knife fight. Whatever. Are one of the four groups, right? The Lamanites, the Jaredites, and the Mulekites, right? Mulek was the only surviving son of Zechariah, the last king of Judah, after the Babylonian conquest of Jerusalem. The Book of Mormon states that after escaping from Judah, Mulek traveled to the Americas and established a civilization. The Lamanites, one of four ancient people described in the book, Lamanites also play a role in the prophecies and revelations of the doctrines and covenants and others. Okay, right. And, of course, we covered the Jaredites, who would be, see how all this is all blank, right? And, you know, uh, the Jaredites are, of course, the Olmecs, right? So, Nephites, all right. Term is used throughout the book to describe a religious, a political, and cultural traditions of a group of settlers. So it states they uh, descend, excuse me, they're described as descending from someone called Nephi, a prophet, son of Lehi, right? Uh, founder of the Nephites in the Book of Mormon. Okay, and they left Jerusalem at the urging of God about 600 B.C. and then uh, traveled with his family to the Western Hemisphere and arrived in the Americas at 589. The Book of Mormon notes them as initially righteous people who eventually had fallen into the state of unbelief and awful wickedness and were destroyed by the Lamanites in 325. So, the Mormons claim that the uh, ancestors of the Nephites settled somewhere. This is all Mormon stuff, so for them to keep going back and forth with Mormon and LDS. All right, so, <clears throat> church of this stuff, Latter-day Saints, is just... <clears throat> <clears throat> LDS, all right? L, the D, and the S, right? Claims the ancestors of the Nephites settled somewhere in present-day Central America after they left Jerusalem. So, they feel that these people settled uh, somewhere in Central America. Now, remember, Central America extends all the way up through here. For them, the only highlight right here is just silly, all right? Mexico, everybody knows Mexico is a part of Central America, so, you know, to isolate it by, uh, uh, you know, it's kind of shows you, you know, uh, after they have left Jerusalem. However, both Smithsonian Institute and National Geographic Society have issued statements that that they have seen no evidence to support the claims of the Book of Mormon. And, you know, we have our own issues with uh, Smithsonian and the National Geographic is just, is what, right? A worldwide Smithsonian. So, and again, National Geographic goes all over the world. So why isn't it called international? Come on, seriously. Everybody should be like, hmm, that is true. How many dudes didn't look at these books just to see the, 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 the women that they put in there from these tri these unheard of tribes because they run around half naked? Archaeology, the Nephites exist, right? 
It is accepted by the fact only by the church that the Nephites existed. Foundation for Ancient Research and Mormon Studies Farms, right? Part of the Brigham Young University, right? So they just keep spreading themselves further and further. That's why nobody believes any of this stuff. You know, eventually someone will not realize that uh, Foundation of Ancient Research, right, is connected to the more. When they start saying that the F A R without the M, then then people will start to respect it until they realize, oh, it is connected to the M, and then again they'll just be like, oh, never mind. Uh, so they've performed extensive archaeological research in the area and publications on the subject and other historical topics are issued uh, regularly through farms that you'd really have to ask do their other counterparts do their Arab counterparts their Arab brothers do they do they even consider any of this stuff as you say, the all, all throughout the article, you know, they they no support of these claims. So then, you know, when the quote unquote real world that is not part of a religious cult, when they could be being the ologists, the liargists, uh, to prove or disprove things. You know, it gets screwed over because, uh, you know, Funny Farm comes and messes it all up because it's part of the uh, the funny cult. The research is disputed by many, of course, right? <laughs> as well as well as the Smithsonian, as a scholar for the pre pre Columbian Mesoamerican history, Michael Cole, right? And just, just Arab Arabocracy is Hagarin. Hegarism, Hegardiz, all over, right? Mormon archaeologists over the years have almost unanimously accepted the Book of Mormon as accurate historical account of the New World peoples. Let me state uncategorically that, as far as I know, there is not one professionally trained archaeologist who is not a Mormon who sees any scientific justification in believing the foregoing to be true. And I would, I would like to state that there are quite a few Mormon archaeologists who join my group, which is, of course, the pre-Columbian Mesoamerican history group. Bare facts on the matter are that nothing, absolutely nothing, has even showed up in any New World excavation which would suggest to a dispassionate observer that the Book of Mormon, as claimed by Joseph Smith, is a historical document relating to the historic of any migrants to our hemisphere. Uh, you're new here, buddy. R. Right? making claims. 1996 Smithsonian Institute issued a statement that addressed claims made by the Book of Mormon state the book can't talk by, by stating that the text is uh, primarily a religious text that archaeologists uh, affiliated with the institution found no direct connection between the archaeology of the new world and the subject matter of the book. Now again, the book's not even a book. The book was written by Smith. If if Smith says, God just told me the name to use, and then you type it into the book, then it's, it's, it, it's just Joseph Smith's memoirs. That's all it is. I, I'd hate to say that because he's he's just not a credible person name my child uh 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 hold on i'm getting a message oh wow you're not gonna believe this i was just told the name of this ancient dude. oh okay we're gonna can't you still come on man statement further says that there 
is genetic evidence that Native Americans are closely related to the people of Asia. Been saying this a long time. And that archaeolo oh, archaeological evidence indicates that the Native Americans migrated from Asia over the land bridge, uh, the Bering Strait in prehistoric times. Been saying this a long time. I haven't been saying it that long. I haven't been doing this for that long, but you know what I'm saying. The statement said, that there is no credible evidence of contact between the ancient Egyptians or Hebrew peoples and the New World. Well, I've been against this a long time. See, so how I I, I stand uh, for some of the things that they say, but against some of the things that they say. In fact, this goes right back to the Smithsonian covering up. Smithsonian is guaranteed to known for covering up the Egyptian mummies in uh, 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 Colorado. I mean, they're not, the Colorado River mummies. Right? Grand Canyon mummies. Grand Canyon temples. So, The statement was issued in response to reports that the Smithsonian Institute was being improperly used to lend credibility to claims of those looking to support the events in the Book of Mormons. So, Book of Mormon claims that they have a uh, narrative, right? The narrative, kings after the Nephites arrived in America to the reign of Moshe, Moshiah, maybe Moshiah the second. Nephites were ruled by kings. Nephi's brother Jacob explained that the subsequent kings were bore the title uh, Nephi, and the people loved Nephi exceedingly, were uh, desirous to retain in remembrance his name, and whoso should reign in his stead were called by the uh, called by the people second Nephi, third Nephi, fourth, according to the reigns of the king, and thus were the people called. Let them be whatever name they would. That doesn't make sense. Whatever name they would, whatever. Something, fifth nephew, blah, 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 whatever. The last Nephite king was uh, Moshe the second. Where is the word nephew? It's, it, Jacob just said, they, shouldn't he be like eighth nephew Moshe? Why do they write it like this? Why don't they keep with the rules they just laid out? Right, you jump the shark that fast. About uh, 91 BC, he declared that instead of naming a new king, he would just finish out his reign. After which the Nephites would elect judges to govern them. There were at least three levels of judges: one chief, uh, several higher judges, and several lower judges. Some passages speak of multiple chief judges, probably synonymous with higher judges. For example, the Alma 62. Uh, 47, uh, third Nephi, uh, 6, uh, 21. Judges were paid accordingly the amount of time they spent officiating. Moshiah the second set uh, the rate at one selene of gold, the equivalent of a senuum of silver for a day's work. Alma 11, 1, and 3. He also arranged for the checks in the system to event corruption as possible. Now, if you have judges, ye have not judged according to the law which you've been given, and ye cause that ye may be judged of a higher judge. If your judges do not judge you, uh, rights judgment, ye shall cause that a smaller, uh, small number of lower judges should be gathered, and ye shall judge the higher judges according to the voice of the people. Moshe uh, 29, 28 and 29. After the announcement, the governmental shift from kings to judges, Moshe explained the principle behind that. The sins of the people uh, have been caused by the iniquities of their kings. Now it is not common that the voice of the people desireth anything contrary to that which is right. But it is common for the lesser part of the people to desire that which is not right. Therefore, this shall, this shall ye observe and make it your law, to do your business by the voice of the people. <laughs> now, that seems to be what the the motto of this this land, right? 
right? These people are saying, hey, they were they were here in ancient times, and we are the people stuff, right? And when you go into the translation of all these different Indian groups, it keeps saying the people, the people, the people, the people. So I find that interesting because uh, the voice of the people, and you'll see these Indian groups will be the people. Uh, even the, the uh, Lenin Lenape, right? Somehow they're connected to uh, some of these other groups. I don't want to say which ones yet and ruin the surprise. Um, but they, of course, uh, translate theirs as the people. There's no way Lene Lenape translates to the people. Now, it goes to a forefather or something like that, but it derives to the the group agreement or group contract that is going on right here. Um, not saying that they're part of this at all. Not saying any of these 50 doggone tabs up here has anything to do with them. Not at all. I would tell you, you know, I can't keep a secret on that level because it's going to be in the same video. The system of judges lasts for 120. Uh, when it was briefly overthrown for about three years by an aristocratic uh, uh, <laughs> uh, cadre led uh by the man a man named jacob he was replaced by a loose system of tribes and kinship which lasted to which they claim the appearance of this person in the americas and established a society that approaches the ideals of zionism again i don't see how the two really equate each other I mean, the israelites are destroyed i mean the, the 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 jacobites are destroyed do you know what britain is today it's just a myth to you you have no idea about what happened to them because they played this game what does it say in in, in don't believe me pause the video Jer, uh, jeremiah chapter 2 26 27 who is the stone that the builder refused who is the stone that they bow down to and said you're my papa who's the stick who's the wood idol who's the idol that they bow down and said you're my papa you begot me they got crushed only a trickle was left to restart and replenish and reseed you know what that's like when you get to the end of the mustard bottle and you can't get that little bit out. A remnant. So, it says the society endured for about two centuries, right? That's 200 years, before the people fell into wickedness again. After 4th Nephi, uh, no mention of what is uh, made of whether the Nephites used judges or kings. Uh, Mormon mentioned that the Lamanites had a king, and Mormon two and nine now look at when it goes in the lamanites they just call it the book of mormon instead of the book of lamanites right so newcomers that call themselves mormons get to name themselves in a book that should be about fucking ancient people and they wonder why nobody goddamn respects their writing hmm hmm his inclusion of that detail phase as it phrased as it is, can be seen as a contrast to the Nephites having a chief judge. Since no charge, no, since no change in government was formed and specifically uh, specifically mentioned after Fourth Nephi, it is possible that the Nephites continued to use judges until the destruction in 385. Okay, so there we have. That's all that they write about the Nephites. Isn't that interesting? So we're just going to go ahead. There's nothing there to highlight anymore. We're just going to move forward. All right, so Lehi's brought up, right? All right, let's go to the top. According to the Book of Mormon, right, Lehi was a prophet during Zechariah's reign, right, in the tribe of Manasseh, father to Nephi, another prominent prophet of the Book of Mormon, the first Book of Mormon, first Nephi, Lehi, Nephi, lead their family from the Promised Land, right, the Book of Mormon suggests that the, he is a merchant, and contemporary of the seven wise men of Greece. 
Okay, so let's see this. The Seven Wise Men of Greece, or Seven Wise Men, right? It was a title given by classic Greek tradition to seven philosophers, statesmen, lawgivers in the 6th century who were renowned for their wisdom. So he is supposed to be a contemporary with them. Is, is this is what they're saying? Okay, so. The Mosaic of Seven Sages, Baalbek, right? Properly known as Baalbek, or Baalbek, or Baalbek, or Baalbek. as uh, a city located on Lebanon, Becca, Becca Valley, right? Uh, it was known for Heli Heliopolis, Sun Sunopolis, right? Same damn city in fucking Illinois, right? And this one is National Museum of Beirut, uh, Tropi at the center, and they don't even want to tell you shit about her, right? Mm, hidden, all right, top clockwise, so crates. All right, so, all right, so that matches this, right? No, it matches this. All right, then next is Chilong, right? As a Spartan of the Seven Sages. All right, so they say this guy was a Spartan. Look at his pointed beard like mine, like this one, right? And we have uh, Pithecus, right? The military general and one of the Seven Sages of Greece. Okay, so you see the faces of these people right here? They don't really look like the people we're about to look up. All right, so I'm, I'm, uh, boy, I'm not even getting into this, man. Um, so here we have something written Lehi and his family from the late 19th century portrayal. Okay, so life according to the Book of Mormon. Lehi and his friend Ishmael, another man, Zoram, left Jerusalem sometime before the destruction by the Babylonians, right, claiming it's uh, 587, all right, Lehi's group proceeds southward, so again, if you're into this whole Jesus bull stuff, this is 600 years, right, minus 20, right, and before all that stuff happens, right? It would be 300 years before Maccabees, right? They proceed to uh, southward down the Arabian Peninsula until he reaches a location called Nahom, right? For some time, we held, we, I dwelt in a tent. Ishmael is reported to have died by this time, and he's buried in a location at home, and the group proceeds eastward in the direction of the desert. Till they reached the fertile coastline, which they named Bountiful, where Lehi's son Nephi was instructed by the Lord to build ships for the purpose of sailing across the ocean to the promised land. A party of men and women and children and their animals board the ship, and they sailed until they reached the Americas. Book of Mormon, now again, these guys say they leave at when um, Babylon. The Jaredites say that they leave before Noah. <laughs> Right or uh, uh, excuse me, after after Noah, I would guess I, I I I I don't know how that would be possible with with the, with with what the flood says, you know that's another problem that most people come to when trying to relate some of this stuff. Um, and again, if they say they're not from Adam, then they can't have Noah's blood. But you know, if it's really not from Noah, then they could have Adam's blood, and that's the whole juggle with that. You know, it's just. Oh, so up in the air, you know, it kind of shows that they weren't too keen on, like, chronological order when they started laying this book out. When it was time for publishing, they should have did a little bit more editing. The book relates the family's journey to America before his death, and Lehi gives important teachings to his children on uh, their prosperity that were recorded on uh, by Nephi on metallic plates that were used in compiling the Book of Mormon. 
All right. So again, if you're compiling the Book of Mormon from plates from Lehi, who leaves after Babylonian captivity, before Babylonians destroy Jerusalem, then why do you have any story about somebody that's supposed to be there at the time of Babylon's destruction by God? See, because this person wouldn't be alive to record those things, to sit there and say, ah, we got it off these plates. That's some drunk man shit. And your Christian brothers, your Arab brothers, they, they're, they're like, no. It's hard enough to, to, to sell this shit. No. So it says possible or, origin of the name, right? They say, oh, it means jawbone or cheek. God knows why. All right. So, here we have the story of Solomon, excuse me, Samson, and Samson kills a thousand men with a, with a jawbone, and here we have, and it came to pass when he, he made an end of speaking that he cast away the jawbone out of his hand and called that place Ramath Lehi, right? Now, you see right there, it's Ramah. Right, and sometimes they put that double A, and we know the Rama people are in Central America and are listed as an indigenous peoples, not a native peoples. And he was sore thirsty, and he said to the Lord, uh, called on the Lord and said, "Thou hast this great deliverance into my hand, a thousand men I just killed, of the righteously and." into the hand of thy servant. Now shall I die of thirst? Now again, you know how it is out in these areas of the West, how a lot of people die of thirst. And now you see all of the Israelites at their moment of need are asking for what? Wells and water, right? So even Samson, shall I die of thirst and fall in the hand of the uncircumcised? Right? And, and, uh, and it says, and God clave, a hollow place. Uh, this thing's stuck. Uh, that was in the jaw, and there came out water thereof, and he had drunk. His spirit came again, and he was revived. Therefore, they call the name Enhakor, which is in Lehi unto this day. So, Of course, then it becomes, oh shoot, right? We have the Lehigh, Mesopotamia, Arizona, and Lehigh, Utah. So, of course, Arizona is closer, closer to Rama, which would be Ramath. This is what the nameless, faceless viewer keeps arguing in his comments. We know that Egypt is in the Arizona desert. Bro, I don't know that. You're just saying stuff without a face. I'm supposed to trust in no evidence by word of typing from someone I cannot even see. And this is my point of no image, no self-image, no comment, no offense. This is not a personal thing. This is about the other viewers. Because when Bobby types some shit, 30 people could believe what Bobby typed. But Bobby didn't leave no link. Bobby didn't leave no evidence. Bobby didn't leave no damn fact. And Bobby didn't even have no damn picture up. So it could, he, it could have been a robot. It could have been some, 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 some piece of crap living in an attic opposite a basement with nothing to do but, hey, I'm just going to throw these guys off. Just 
It doesn't matter if you are 100% correct. How do we verify what you said? Now, you see all these tabs? We done did two, and it's only a half hour in. Now, wouldn't it be interesting if we did live videos, and then you called in, and then you read? But we can't do that because people want to play games. People want to slow shit up. People have no lives. Sorry about my little rant. Drinking apple juice tonight. Tends to do that. <laughs> so, again, open your Google tab. Pause the video if you're not watching the premiere. Type in Rama People. We should come back with, uh, what, Nicaragua or some, some, somewhere in Central America. That's where it's going to come. So, in Accor. Yeah, I'll do it. Fuck it. It's going to be a long one anyway. I'm going to put, oh, I'm going to spell it wrong on purpose. It's going to correct me. Did you mean? Oh, it didn't correct me. Oh, well. All right, let's take the H off. Now, we'll look at the images. See, it says Rama indigenous people. That's a Rama. These are Rama. Now watch this real quick. Rama, indigenous people, Nicaragua. All right, that's Central America. If you're not cool with the map, it's okay. I had to look that shit up when I when I first started finding who the Rama people were. I didn't know where Nicaragua was. I was like, well, oh, look how they got nigga in their name. But no, 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 it's not what you think. So see these dark skinned people. These are Rama people. It's not to say that the light skinned dude ain't one. You know, it's just it's just this is like you know. The closer to the heritage. If I showed you this picture and said you would think, you know, light skinned people, blah, 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 but you, you know, they, they do have a rich color. I won't deny them the rich. When we deal with proxy and non proxy, I don't want to put up a light skinned person and have people, because we've all been trained in racism. I'm not attacking anybody I can't see, I'm not attacking anybody's thoughts. I'm just trying to express. Now, I hope people will accept Rama Imam a Hindu, right? You see a Negro right there, right? Hagarinism, you'll find out soon, right? So these are not Rama people. You see, they live an indigenous life. They live in huts, they live in shacks. That's what, they live in villages. Off the ground, rain season, water comes all down there. Got to have the wood off the ground. Right? Nicaragua village. It ain't that bad. It ain't that great. So you see, I want you to pay attention how all these groups kind of look alike. Oh, here's what you need. I I I know you. There you go. So you don't, you're not confused about what I'm talking about. All right? And the sons of Kush, Seba, Havia, right? Remember it said Ramath, right? Havia, Sabta, Seba, Sab. 
Sabta and Rama. And Sabtekta. And the sons of Rama. Sheba and Dadan. Ethiopians today. I'm not making this shit up. Look. Yeah, let's go back to the top. Oops. Stops. Read it again. They're not native, they're indigenous. Where were the sons of Ham? They just told you where these people live. In Nicaragua. Indigenous to Nicaragua. So where were the other Hamites? Come on, people. This shit ain't... <laughs> right? If I show you the Canaanites and everything that they put in carving says California and Arizona, even, even when they put them in their federal home, they put them close to, to right where we're talking about. So where you think Ms. Rahim was? If Rama, the son of Kush, is in Nicaragua, Anek, his children seem to be in California. Where do you think the rest of these people going to be? Let me get rid of Rama. I'm going to leave Genesis 6 up. Now, in there it said, in Hakor, right? <laughs> we did this real quick. In Hakor is taco, right? Some Chicago shit, right? Sushi, Chinese, right? Japanese, burrito, Mexican, and poke bowl. Poke is what? Poke is, uh, what? What's Spanish for chicken? Uh, uh, po I forgot. It starts with a P. But that's probably going to be chicken. That's my guess. I don't guess right all the time. I've told you I'm guessing. Look, unless we have it on screen, it's a guess. If we had it on screen a month ago, most of the viewers have a strong memory, so there ain't no arguments there. Y'all know when and if I'm lying. Y'all know. So in Hakor, they say it's Beth Shemesh. That's just what they claim, right? So... When he had drunk, he the spirit came again and revived him, and they called it En Hakor, which is Lehi to this day, right? And you already saw that it did not say uh, En Hakor; it said Rama, right? <laughs> I mean, I almost got to bring it back up. Anyway, let's chase En Hakor because we already know Rama is in Nicaragua. And it's even got the indigenous title. We chase in Hakor, and they're like, uh, they're still doing the food business in Chicago, still giving us the food business in Chicago. So when I put in Hakor at not National Park, still giving us Chicago, right? Oh, no, I need to find this one to make the jump. Let me go back. In Hakor. Beth Shemash and Kaho, Babylon, what is that? Helps us. Do, 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 do. There we have Samson's Prayer. Same thing. That one helps us. Do, 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 do. And then uh, in Hakori, Spring of Something, right? That one will help us. Do, 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 do. I don't know how I got it up because I don't see it again. Anyway. In Hakor. See, it's Ramoth, Lehi. It, 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 anyway. It. Somehow, I forgot how, it leads to Maniototo. Maniototo. All right, so I got to find that first before I make that jump. Because it 
Do we jump to another one? Nope. Ooh. I have to ask people to just trust me on this one. Ooh. Food, food, food. See, because I don't think I opened any of these. Slaughter of the Philistines, and again, everything else, ooh, didn't want to do that. Everything else of the Philistines seems to be uh, Arizona with the Phoenix Philistine, Phoenicia Phoenix. Uh, oh, I'm not going to find it. I'm going to skip. I'm just going to go into it. All right, somehow in Hakor, led to, Ma I didn't even click on it yet, led to Manitoto. All right, Manitoto is uh, Man -E -O Toto, elevated inland region in Ontago. Yeah, I just, oh, I gotta pause it. I gotta figure this out real quick. Oh, I'm sorry, I couldn't do it. Couldn't figure out how I got here. Um, but you see, there's no back. What I did is I highlighted something, right, like central, and then I opened. Now, this is how it goes. When I highlight something, I search Google for that, right? And you see how when it comes up, there's no forward or backwards on it. But see, if I go, if I open a Google and I type some shit in, it's got a back button immediately. So what I'm trying to show you is I, highlight, I highlighted Manny Ototo from something and I just can't figure out where it was um it's probably from something I, I closed I, I just can't figure it out um and that's the only purple one I went to and that one wasn't it I thought I went through these but even the one and two isn't highlighted. Um, and it says that it's a uh, fountain of he who cried, fountain of the crier, uh, fountain of the outburst. Here we have spring of the collar, spring of the partridge. All right, so these are birds being named now. So now they're trying to naturally give the spring that came up uh, natural names obviously it's of what animals are found there uh, but again I I, I I I've lost it it's it might be uh, after it who knows anyway Manny Toto gets us to New Zealand Ontago Valley of Otago gets us to the uh, central Ontago and it's called the Ida Valley Lies in the Manu Eureka. Now, if you know it's going to be there, and then you says there, Eureka, right? Eureka Valley. And they take you to California. If you just say Eureka, California, right? It's in Humboldt, Redwood. Is, is that a different place? It seems like it takes you to a different place. All right, back to the Sequoia Zoo Park. See how this isn't really doing them that good. It's more like they took the name with them, right, and uh, and named everything there. It's actually a, kind of a symbol that shows that they were here and they took the shit there. Now, um, they're part of flora and fauna. You flora. Flora, Florid Land, Florid Land National Park. Um, this is their new main home. All right. Um, again, you're not going to find like a bunch of ancient shit about them there. In fact, the, you know, the history of these guys are going to be that they seeded everything. They went to the islands and just seeded the islands. All right. So. Here we have the nephrites, right? Uh, it's, a, it's a stone. This is, if you take the R out, it's the people. If you add an R, it's a stone. So they name themselves after the stone that they, you know, um, 
found to be hard, right? It is one of two different mineral species of jade. So they name themselves the fucking people of jade or the jade empire. So, I mean, it's right here. So, you know, we're talking about Mortal Kombat, right? And, of course, in Mortal Kombat, they have this character named Jade, right? And Jade is an evil twin or a clone, right? Now, when you look at a lot of these groups, it's funny how they all look alike as if, you know, clearly they share the same forefather. The Jade character is an outcast from Outworld. If you look at the Nephite people, the Nephite people were outcast from this quote-unquote New World. Uh, they are now in a new place of Nef Newfoundland, or Newfoundland, however you want to pronounce it. Whatever. New Zealand! There's no Finn, you dumbass. Thank you. New Finland. Okay, so Nephrite is really jade, right? Other mineral species known as jade is jadeite, right? It only comes in two two types, right? Is it classified as a stone? Okay, well the other is classified as what, right? Which is a variety of pyrozine. <laughs> Pyrozine, not pyrite, pyrozine. So, nephrite jade possesses main, mainly grays and greens and occasionally yellows, browns, and whites. Blah, 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 beads, blah, 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 right? It's the official mineral of Wyoming. Doesn't mean it was mainly there, it just means it's the official you know, stone of them now. All right, so we've actually been down this, right? Now, I want you to pay attention to, it's called their... Noun p p Pown Amu Right Amurican We remember this in Amurica Pown Anu Right You already know it's jade And this is what it looks like So when you look at this what they're digging up in Utah, which they would have get had a better find if they would have been to Wyoming, maybe. They moved to a new area, and then they acquired this. This is why that national park is important to them, because that's their, what? That's their jade mine. Ancient burial pieces, right? Idols for burial. Is why people rob graves. So when you go down prehistoric China, and then again Maori, right? Pom, pom, amu, pom amu. So that's pretty much it for that one. So I'm gonna close a few of these. This turned in. What is this one? Don't need that one. That one's so difficult. Core. Yeah, let me get through this one too. Now we're at Maori. Now we're going to look at the Maori people. Since that's what it said last, we go with the Maori people. It says, hey, the Maori people of New Zealand, from Maori people of the Cook Islands, see Cook Islanders, so they're spread amongst the islands. Uh, from Maori people of uh, Society Island, see the Tahitians, Tahitian treat, not to be accused, uh, confused with Maori or Maori or Maori. Now, we just read about a name that was really funny and moron more. Moroni Cumber. And you can see what these people look like. And I'm willing to bet the Moroni Mori Cumber name has to do with more so these people. Alright. 
So, the Maori, which is different, right, are indigenous Polynesians. They're not indigenous Polynesians. They're, so they're, they go from island to island. They're going to tell you they go from island to island when they arrived in New Zealand. Oh, boy. So, uh, the Maori originated with settlers from eastern Polynesia, their brothers and sisters. So, when you get into Polynesians, all right, what do I do with that? Is that it? Is that what we get to the B one? No, 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 we get to start right there. All right, when you get into Polynesians, this is all one family group. And what they did is they left their home and they went to the islands and they, of course, acquired the resources. And when they came across indigenous people, they chose which ones they were going to breed with. So I'll get to that. I'm just not saying it to, you know, dictate or anything like that. Maori originated with the settlers of Eastern Polynesia who arrived in New Zealand in several waves of Waka, right? So when you see Waka in names, what does it mean? It's canoe people, right? Waka Waka, canoe, canoe. Uh, voyages roughly at 1320 and 1350. Now, when we watch Medicine Man's video and Medicine Man has a, uh, a book, and the book says what? It's the, uh, the arrival of these different groups before Columbus. All right? So, it only says they get there a hundred years early. Over several centuries in isolation. Bullcrap. These settlers developed their own distinctive culture. These are, are the same, this goes into the head shrinking people, right? These are the people that they found with the head shrunk, right? And then uh, these are the people that were left scratching their heads saying, we live side by side with them. We don't know how their heads got shrunk. Uh, that's, that's a whole different, you know, uh, whole nother hour, some other direction, right? All right, so, all right. <laughs> the Waka. Over several centuries, isolated uh, settlers developed their own distinctive cultures whose language, mythology, crafts, and performing arts evolved independently from those of other Eastern Polynesian cultures, right? The arrival of Europeans in New Zealand started in the 17th century, brought enormous changes to the Maori way, uh, Maori way of life. The people gradually adopted aspects of Western society and culture, Initial relations between the Maori and Europeans were largely amicable, and with the signing of the Treaty of Waitanagi uh, in 1840, the two cultures coexisted. Rising tensions over dispute of land sales led to the conflict of 1860s. Oh, because they don't really understand claim. It's cool. Most indigenous people don't understand claim, right? And when you exist with these cultures, they act like they own the land now. And they'll set up a building and they'll leave. While you leave the, the land to breathe, let it live, let the, let the animals and shit come in. These, yeah, I get it. I get it. Totally get it. And they start devouring the resources. Like walking uh, 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 tree mulchers, man. Social upheavals, epidemics, uh-oh. Did you guys get blankets? <laughs> the introduction of disease took a devastating toll over the Maori population, which fell dramatically, and by the start of the 20th century, the population began, uh, began to recover, uh, right? All are equal under the law. You can sue them now, right? And, and made an uh, increase with their standing in wider New Zealand society and achieved social justice. Traditional culture has uh, thereby enjoyed a significant revival, which is further bolstered in the uh, protest movement that emerged in the 60s. However, disappointment numbers of Maori face significant economic and social ob obstacles uh, and generally have lower life expectancies and income compared to other New Zealand ethnic groups. 
right? Uh, okay, so they suffer higher levels of crime, health problems, and education underachievement. So they're dealing with books with lies, too. I, I get it. A number of so socio ethnic, excuse me, ethnomic, economic initiatives have been instigated with the aim of closing the gap between the Maori and the other New Zealanders. Oh, so they have a wealth gap too. <laughs> Political and economic uh, redress for historical grievances is also ongoing. Okay, well, good for you. Uh, census tells you how many people they had, identifying them. I mean, so look, it's their land at this point, and they make up 16% of the national population, right? So, again, they were purged. And now, they're beyond 13% of black, uh, of Americans are black. You under, this, this is, this is drastic, right? So they've, they've reached three points higher than, than their masters have allowed them. So now you are, it's called a population growth. Okay. So after settlers, they call them Pakaha, right? Pakaha. In addition, uh, some live in Australia. Excuse me, Australia. Yep. I was just making that sure they didn't say Austria. I was like, what? Yeah, Australia. The Maori language is spoken to some content by about a fifth of all Maori, representing. 3% of the total population. Now, you know, they, or if they're over here in Australia with the Australian Aboriginal in Crocodile Dundee, good eye, Mike, um, you know, that's going to put them uh, more so towards the Cush end, but they're going to they're gonna preach their own thing here. Um, and so I'm, I'm just going to, you know, just give it to, give it to you how they give it. Uh, one fifth of Maori still speak their language, representing uh, three percent of the total population. They're active in all active in spheres of New Zealand, New Zealand culture and society, with independent representation in areas such as media, politics, and sports. Go to etymology of the name. It means normal, natural, or ordinary. All right. In legend or oral tradition, is distinguished ordinary mortal beings. The Tangata Maori from deities, spirits, spirits, or Wariru, we, we are you, something like that. Likewise, why Maori denotes fresh water, or well, why does this des denote spirits, but then when it's in front of your name, it de devotes fresh water? Well, why does Maori mean water now? It didn't say it meant water up here. So, why all of a sudden, not it don't mean water, it means fresh water. So what is regular water? What is toilet water? You know, I mean, so, so again, your name means normal, natural, ordinary. Again, just putting water in front of it, it changes to fresh water kind of sounds not right. As opposed to salt water. As opposed to what words for salt water? This is what I, what the fuck is going on in this? There are cognate words uh, in Polynesian language, all deriving from Proto-Polynesian, right? And they say ma'akuli, which is reconstructed to mean real, true, or genuine. So, again, when you go into these languages, they will all point to where they, where they come from because, again, you can't get away from language. And we'll take down, we'll go down this road for a minute. See where it need, leads. Early visitors from Europe to New Zealand generally for, referred to the indigenous inhabitants as New Zealanders or the natives. Now, that's just like the definition of America. Americans used to be the copper-colored people, right? Now, 
the people that call themselves Europeans now call their descendants New Zealanders or natives, right? <laughs> so, you see the exact same pattern happening all over the world, no matter what culture it is. The Maori use the term Maori to describe themselves in a pan-tribal sense. Again, pan-African, pan-tribal, okay? <clears throat> when we all heard pan, there's only two pans we know of. We know pan, pan that weird monster, and and pan Africa, so you know, yeah, whatever. They all, uh, they always, uh, Maori often use the term Tangata when Ua, people of the land. I, uh, up here, Tangata means mortal or human being. So, whatever. I would imagine that Tangata itself would have a unique meaning to it. And each time you combine it with other stuff, it changed the meaning a little bit, but whatever. Uh, you cannot sit there and say you're the people of the land when you have the record when you came into the land. Calling yourself first to the land is one thing. Again, we're playing a game of risk. And at one point, we're going to see them make a statement that they can no longer defend the land. And this seems to be the point with everybody because they are up against fire. Seems every time anybody comes up against fire and they are not used to fire, they seem to fall to the weapons of hell. So, here we have some memory name for New Zealand is Aotearoa. Ter. Terraria. Right. Okay, so the history, it says, no credible evidence exists of pre-Maori settlement of New Zealand. That's, why would you tell us they're here in the 1300s? See, like, again, man, it's, it's a hell of an article to be able to go back and forth and back and forth like that. Uh, so, okay, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me let me let me go down here. Let me, let me continue. Right the term can also refer to Maori people in relation to New Zealand as a whole. Who is considered Maori and who is not is clear from a paka, pakeha, pakeha perspective. Now again, pakeha. Also, if you take off the a, it is the biblical paka, king. So now the Maori seem to call anybody who puts a yoke on them Paka after the king of Israel. So it says uh, for electoral purposes in 1974, the government required documented ancestry to determine the status of a Maori person and only those with at least 50 cent, 50 percent Maori ancestry allowed to choose which seats uh they wish to vote in all right so you see they play this game again uh, the game is not played for white people or what you would call arab people that that are pale they don't play this game with themselves they play this game against the indigenous people which just again this is because if the indigenous people have a fair share they would control their own resources and their fucking house guests would be renting from them again who would let their house guests take over the house and then collect rent from them? Again, what is wrong with the people that call themselves white of the world? They're going to people's lands, bullying them, pointing weapons at them that are new to them. They're doing this as a mafia. They're, they're extracting money, extracting resources, killing off the people, taking the women. I mean, this is, this is hell on earth. All these societies can choose 
who in their society lives and dies. But when you go outside of your society and you just start murdering off people to conquer, I mean, who's really the devil? So, then again, the devil starts, starts to write. There's no evidence of, of when they, uh, that they've been there that long. But again, man, <laughs> when you say, what plant is this, you'll believe them. When you say, what flower is this, you'll believe them. When you say, what tree is this, you'll use that name. <laughs> so, on the other hand, compelling evidence of archaeology, linguistics, and physical anthropology indicates the first settlement of settlers migrated uh, from Polynesia and came, became the Maori. Evidence indicates that their ancestry is part of larger groups of Austronian, okay, whatever, man. Oh, it's a tongue twister till I hear it five times from somebody else, right? Stretches back 5,000 years, beginning of time, to the indigenous peoples of Taiwan. So as you can see, they are related to the peoples of Taiwan. Then they became the Austronesians, right? Polynesians, Austronesians, whatever, right? And then from there, they broke into the Polynesian. And there, from there, different groups broke into the Maori. Right? Papa. Papa's son. Papa's son's son. Oh, effed up. Come on back, seriously. So you get what I'm saying here, right? So look, Polynesian people settled in large area encompassing Samoa, Tahiti, Hawaii, right? So these are people that are related to of ta people of Taiwan. So that don't look like the natives of Hawaii. Oh boy, it just keeps going there. Ah, why not, right? You see this? Gayo Shan, right? That's Khan. These, this is particularly used by mainland Chinese, right? Indigenous peoples. You know what this is, right? Amites. So, I believe they're Amites. Because I'm, it's, 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 it's all in these. When you combine it all. It ain't that much. It looks like like it's a lot. Trust me, I'm the one that's reading it. Ah, uh, along with you. That's why it's on screen. Yeah. So, it's uh, here we got the Rapa Nui, right? Everybody's heard of Rapa Nui, and they slide that in. All right, we're going to see that later when we get into the uh, Tahitians and the uh, Polynesians and stuff. All right, so indigenous people of Taiwan, right? Astro. Just say it in your head. It's okay. You don't need to hear. You don't need to hear me say it. All right? Island of Melanesia, Polynesia. They're all related. They told you the bush, the hot and tot, and the Negro is related, but the Negrito is a different type. The Negrito and the Negro ain't necessarily the same, though they look the same. Anyway. I don't know Polynesian rat bones was going to make any difference. All right, so early history, period of Mayo, uh, archaic Moa hunter or the colonization, right? Their colonization period, right? So when the world colonized from the time of Noah, it's spelled with an S. When the Arab colonizes, and takes over the world in this later period it's called is it's spelled with a z so that's the difference between the two different colonization periods uh the earth so anytime you have any name and they went somewhere and colon and egypt went and they colonized another area it's colonization when arab bob does it doug it's with a Z right there. That's just their code. I'm just telling you. And the early Maori diet included the Moa, 
and that's why they call themselves Maori. They are named after a flightless bird. Dino, right? They ate dinosaurs. Dino, Dinoris robustus. They ate a robust bird. Reached about, right? So, again, you are what you eat. You know how this is going to go. They're going to claim that they're Israelites in a little bit, right? And, they're, and here you have them eating a dragon. They're known for, they're named after the dragon that they used to eat. Right? And other large birds that are unclean. And sea, uh, furs of seal, unclean, that have never been hunted before. This archaic period, for its distinctive real necklace, <clears throat> also for the remarkable, that's the real necklace, right? That's the teeth of the animals, right? And they punch holes in them and put in a necklace, right? And lack of weapons, fortification, uh, typical of the late classic Maori. Why? Because they're on a, an island and they don't have anybody to fight but themselves. <laughs> right? They tell you, uh, the only thing they're fighting up here is demons. Where, where is that? Right? Why would they have Maori means normal or natural, but Tanga Maori from deities and spirits? Why would that? Because that's what they're up against at the time. Up until what? The 13th century. And who comes in? La French du. Uh, it is the only known New Zealand archaeological site containing bones of people who were born elsewhere. So, some kind of site of people born elsewhere. Okay. Factors that operate in the transition uh, to classic period, the culture at the time of European contact, included significantly the cooler period, whatever, 1590% of the uh, Moa end of others. So it's when the, it's when the Moa died, right? They told you they've been there from 1300. So they from 1300 to 1500, they were eating these birds, the Moa. And they weren't called Moa till they found the damn bird. The dino. So, again, it's, it's it's a it's a giant chicken, right? Um, so the bird goes extinct in 1500. Once the bird goes extinct, the French wars start, right? In the classic period, fine, right? Fine jade. What well, you even want? Why they even call it that? It's just jade, right? And the, uh elaborately carved their canoes right but they show you a picture of just shit canoes there's not nothing carved into them all right so this is how their houses are so imagine how their canoes would have been carved right every every arm or leg or whatever every extension on the stern and this and that and you see they got the same style as the egyptian don't bullshit yourself don't hurt your mind. You see what they're doing for sales, right? They're using just thinner sticks because they're not making cloth. They, that's what they're using right there, the, the, the reeds. He's wearing a reed cape. That's probably going to be a reed sea mass. He's wearing bear or something. I'd probably be bear. All right, this guy's got something on too, all right? All right, so again, they say they're known for uh, the word "paw" refers to village or settlement, and they say they're known for cannibalism. Can't believe that, man! You say that all the time. Every time you steal somebody's land, uh, around 1500, they migrated east to the Chatham Islands and developed in the people name known as the Moor Moriori Moriori. All right. Uh, Sherlock Holmes versus Professor Moriori. All right. Now, you see, it's the same people. All right. Now, they went over, and they must have ran in some island people that were darker. With pacifism, a key part of their culture. Now, that's completely different from the people they left, huh? 
So things were getting out of control when you sit there and say, well, there's claims of cannibalism. So a group broke off and said, we don't want to be part of that. Contact with Europeans. Yeah, yeah, yeah. European settlement in New Zealand began in the 19th century, leading to extensive sharing of culture and ideas. No, dude, that's that's called theft, bro. Um, all you did was bring other play, other stuff. You, as slaves, you learned what was happening in Britain to to build. Uh, you, you know, even the French taking over uh, uh, France. Uh, you know, sudden technology jump for them. No different from them going to New Zealand, setting up shop when the average uh, indigenous person, you know, learns the language, then communicates. So what's that you're doing there? And then, well, this is how we build a cart. This is how we make uh, uh, attachments for horses. All the indigenous people are learning the same. They're getting caught up during the Wild West era. Just like the Indians here. Just like if I tape in Maori today, I'm going to see somebody walk in a pair of Levi's and this and that, right? Just like if I do the same thing with one of these Indian tribes, for the most part, I'm going to see a bunch of dudes in what? But, you know, modern shit. So what was the dragon's job? What, what was the goal of the dragon? What did he give his soldiers to do? Go out to all these indigenous groups, no matter who they are, and bring them up to code. So all of them have a chance at what? My influence to be in my army. Because what do these guys want? They both want a war. The Most High is a war general. The dragon, hey, unfortunately, he's he's been designed, everything is designed. He's been designed to be a war general. He's been designed to be a great opponent. But his end is foretold, which makes him more dangerous because he has access to the same information that we do. What would it be like to be one of the greatest things of devour and destruction, yet no? There is a prophecy of your destruction, yet no, you have the power to control the world. Until that time. I'll give you this power, but know this. In these people's main diet was a dragon. Dinosaur Unbelievicus. Demographics, culture. So, I think I'm going to, you know, the more we skip these things, the more we lose just the little bits, you know. Uh, but this, this, there's a lot more. I encourage people to skim through this uh, at their own. Again, looking up a lot of this stuff uh, individually, um, you know, it's it's where you get the juice. Skimming over this stuff is just skimming over this stuff. Breaking this stuff down is 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 where you is where it comes in. Um, See, these are these are things, you know. The sports, uh, I don't know. You know, something. You never know where they're gonna hide something. All right. Something's always hidden in language. It's just that I'm, I just reach that point where I'm just feel like I need to move on. The religion.
Race relations are indigenous people recognized in New Zealand law. The people of the land identifies the traditional connection between Maori and a given area of land. Look at this. Now, it's their freaking continent, right? They settled it first, and now they are given an amount of land, right? as a whole can be considered as uh of the land of new zealand entirely they should be like except the chatham islands accepting the chatham islands why they were there first again is again it's like like again again the people at chatham island looks darker like they mixed with somebody else who was probably another people on the island ah, this is so funny and then you have the r-o-h-e the royal now, Ro also goes back to the Moor, which is kind of funny, unless the Moor took the name from here. But we'll get into this one though. This one, this one looks good. Where, where did that go? Yeah, that 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 that's a biblical name, so that's worth it. All right, so again, here we have, they, they murdered everybody down to 16% of the people, and historically, many Pakaha, right? That's the the interloper, the new person, right? The white person, the Arab, they viewed race relations in their country as being the best in the world. A view that prevailed until Maori urban migration in the mid 20th century brought cultural and social socioeconomic uh, differences to wider attention so of course if you're thriving off of their land you're gonna say it's fucking great here right you strip them and put them in shacks and you live in what apartment buildings made of brick to keep them out see the flag of maori is a bird right with its wing extended It's just an emoji. It's just, it's just a clip of an emoji. It, it, it's, it's, it's re really looks like the the eagle with the arms extended and the tail down, and it's just showing the uh, the, the upper right hand corner or the upper uh, the northern the northeast corner of the of the full image. In fact, with these lines continuing, it, it would let your mind think that the wings extended out. You know. But it's just, it's a, that's a bird beak. That's the bird head. That's the bird wing. This is the image that they paint on their face nonstop. All right. So, this will take forever. I'm going to love it. Polynesians. All right. And they give you another long group. We're sticking to Nephites. So, I'm just going to just show you briefly how these are all connected right right regions with significant populations right chile right below us right they have about five thousand people there right two volt two value right tonga samoa australia french polynesia united states tons of people here right tons of as many more people are in new zealand right 60,000, oh, 67,000 more live at home than they do here in America, all right? So, uh, and this is just Polynesians, right? Independent Polynesians, Samoa, Nuke, Cook Islands, Tonga, Fiji, Tuvalu, uh, or form minorities in countries such as Australia, Chile, Easter Island, New Zealand, right? They're a, new, they're, they're a minority in lands that they discovered. All these lands they discovered, and then once the second wave of colonization, the mass colonization of the, colonization of the world came, they overthrew these people. Like they didn't exist. Like they were ants.
Uh, some live in France now because French came over. French came over and warred with them. French Polynesian Wars, Wallace and Futuna, Futuna Islands. Um, again, why would you have an island named Wallace? Somebody lived there before. Uh, the evil that men do, right? United Kingdom overseas territories, right? We'll take some home with us, right? United, United States, we have tons living on Hawaii, and again, America, Samoa. Polynesians have acquired a reputation as great navigators, right? Because their canoes reach the most remote. How can they get that far in a canoe? <laughs> Allowing settlement of islands as far apart as Hawaii and Easter Island to New Zealand reaching from North and South America. So they went all over the world. Right? They stayed away from big major lands where major kingdoms were. And what happened anyway? The major kingdoms came and took them over, right? During trade expeditions, the Kuma. All right, so Polynesia, people of Polynesia accomplished this voyaging using ancient navigation skills. They did it in canoes, bro. You, you, there's nothing you're going to say to make it any better. Your people die in rivers with canoes. These guys take canoes and they cross oceans. But you have guns, you point them at them, and you say, hey. Good job getting here. Pow! Your daughter's mine. And this land. And I'll give our children a small corner over there. Okay? <sighs> so again, the Moron Kum Kum Kumer thing, I think this might be some of these people that are connected to them. You see their their laid back attitude about things uh kind of pushed towards that idea that oh they had a prophet right they are indigenous polynesian of chatham islands we already know they left new zealand and went to the islands all right um and we have it over here the chatham islands are over here Excuse me, I read this first, and then I saw this, and I tried to play it off by doing a big circle, but I'm... <laughs> ah, but I see it's all the all these islands are the Chatham Islands, I believe, right? Map of the Chatham Islands. All right, so... Uh, again, Polynesia, I believe it's up here. Uh, all right, so... History and origin is what we want, and then we're going to move on. They're ethnically Polynesian. They developed a distinct Moriori culture in the Chatham Islands as they adapted to local conditions. Although speculation once suggested that they settled the Chatham Islands directly from the tropical Poly Polynesian Islands, now that maybe could make sense too. Uh, current research in this indicates that ancestral Maori were Maori Polynesians who immigrated to the Chatham Islands from the mainland of New Zealand at around 1500 when that dinosaur died. Evidence supporting this theory comes from the characteristics that the Moriori language is common with the dialected dialect of the Maori spoken by the Nagi, the, right, M more Naga. Again, if I, I typed in Naga the other day, you saw they look like the, the, the Maori people. The Naga are the Naga in your mind because Sh Shoshone had a dark skin wife. Whether she was a Negro or not, it's irrelevant. These people look the way they look. When you're looking for Naga people, you don't see no Negroes named Naga. You see Indians named Naga, uh, named Naga. You see people that look half Asian named Naga. I can't help that. I was taught the same shit that you were taught. 
I just said, screw it, I'm going to read some. And now here we are. And then you see how they talk to the whole Kopapa. They talk just like the Indians here. They talk just like the people that seem to have been part of the Tower of Babel as well. Wa Wakapapa. Prevailing wind patterns. Just, just some shit thrown out there, right? Adapting local conditions. All right, here you have the monkey, right? Frog, something like that. Uh, so, so, what, a river? This one, I'm not sure because once you have this part, right, you can see this is a snake. Uh, but the other don't show snake heads, so this one's kind of confusing to what, uh, what they were drawing. But these are, they're just emojis. Remember, you, you know the red monkey that's got these stripes on its face? Right? Um, and it's really odd that you keep drawing the same dip in the head like they're dealing with frogmen, like the Loveland frogman. Right? You can see here on the hands. Right? There's no, that's clearly fingers. That's clearly fingers. Monkeys have fingers, right? Monkeys have toes. What he's drawing here has fingers. What he's drawing up here has flippers. Flippers. Right? You see the actual tree carving. That's a frog's head. I looked down, I saw a of frog's heads. So, they go crazy over the green stone. Maybe the, uh, these things do too. Maybe, maybe that's what the attraction is. Right? So, I'm going to keep going. We already did the Maori. This is the images of what you get when you type in Maori. Right? And so, and when the law is no tattoo, do not tattoo your skin. You know, again, later we're going to get to a point where they say that they're Israelites, you know, and um, just, you know, like they break so many laws. There's nothing that says their culture uh, is being consistent with any laws. So Nephites, Maori, so when you just openly ask that, says Hogoth and the Polynesians, right? And this is the Nephites thought to happen to them. And Alma, the connection between Maori and the history of the Nephites and the Lamites were firmly blah, 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 blah. Uh, here it again, Hogoth again, Nephite shipbuilder, lived around 55, traditions, a Mormon church, right? So what they're saying is, is when they came to the coast and the people started building ships, they're saying that that is when they went, they were, they were on America. And when they built the ships and then they left on the ships, that's when they saying they went to these places on barges. Now, again, they're telling you from his, from history, the mayor may already just straight up left wherever Polynesians were. But they're telling you in this book something else happened that they were here and they left here and went there and this is what this person i believe is arguing the shipbuilding part and we know they didn't build ships that big they built canoes all right and they scatter and inhabit the isles of the sea. Well, that's the same thing that Japheth was supposed to do. And this is what's been in the back of my mind the whole time. As I read these, they tell us that they're all related to this and this, and it seems, it seems like these might be Japheth people, not Canaan. Because again, we just happen to have it open. I shall ask you, with you seeing it on the screen, who gets the Isles of the Sea? Now, these were the generations of the sons of Noah, Shem, and Ham, and Japheth, right? And under them were born the sons after the flood. And the sons of Japheth were Gomer, the French. That's what the book of Jasher says. Gomer, the French, 
Gomez River, something like that. I forgot. Frank, Frank, Frank River. Right? And they just happen to be friends today. Then you have Magog, then you have Mahdi, then you have Yavin. Now, one of these places they have actually is Java. Yavin is known to have Yava or Java. You have Tubal, you have Meshach, you have Tiraz. If, again, Gomer had Ashkenazi, they had Rifa, and they had Turgoma. Javan, which is mentioned here, had Elisha, Tarshish, Kittim, Dodan. All right? So you're only told Gomer's children and Javan's children. What about Magog's children? What about Mahadi's children? What about Tubal's children? What about me? So these are important things. Now, trust me, I understand that in different sections, looking these up individually, more and more information is released about them. But the interesting thing is, for these people that we are looking at, is that we have a clear history from what's written on screen. We can go to the real encyclopedias, we can go to these, and we can go through the notes, we can go through the references. You can argue Wikipedia is not strong enough. We can go farther. I don't care. But the important thing is the history keeps saying is they flooded the isles. And the isles are islands. All right, so I guess I feel like the longer I keep going on about this, it it turns more into like a uh, a defense mechanism. <laughs> you know, uh, All right, we just looked at the, uh, see, I had the Polynesians there, so take that down. And we have the Tahitians. Uh, Nephite Maori, all right. All right, so let's keep going real quick. Get to the Tahitians. Uh, and you see that they're all part of the same ethnic group. All right. Um, and they will not give any history. They will not give etymology of the name. All right, they just start off with colonization, All right? Hi, Tahitians exist. They're part of the Polynesians, All right? Also, the Maori, the Samoans, and the Hawaiians, or the people that live on Hawaii now. Again, this is it's very irritating, All right? Uh, I have to pull this out right now. And this is what Hawaiians look like. All right. So this image of Hawaiians and Samoa don't really they they say that's Samoa, but you know, uh, boy, the dance they they want to do. All right, so I don't know which picture to pick. Let's just look at them all. That's the same picture. That's the same picture. So you can see how they look kind of like Mexicans in some pictures.
Yeah. Let me see, kind of Arab looking. Let me see, kind of Asian, same family, Asian looking, Arab looking, right? Almost American looking, flat chested like the rest of us. <laughs> so, you see, he's got like almost an Asian look and almost, uh, what do you say, the almost an Italian look in a face with the nose and the way the chin is. You see how it's like, a, you know, you can, you, may, you see what you see, man. You've seen the same TV shows I've seen, fucking Punky Brewster, Give Me a Break, all that shit, right? So, you know, right? A rock for him to have an afro. He's got to, he's got to wear a wig. You know, I, I know who The Rock's dad is. You don't have to give me that. But he takes takes the image of the mom, right? I get it. But he identifies as Samoan. And Ephraim will people the new world. The world coming, you know. No idea where it's all going to fall, you know. So he looks pretty, pretty close to our ethnicity, you know, um, <laughs> never know where this is going to go, so let's go backwards a little bit, we went to the Tahitians, see how they're all connected, you know, do they give any more connection, kingdom of Bora Bora, this is something that people don't really know about, right? Bora Bora officially recognized by France in 1847 after they, what, stole everything. Let's keep moving, you know, start crying, man. French-Indian War is a North American conflict in a larger imperial war between Great Britain and France known as the Seven-Year War. The French and Indian War began in 1754 and ended with the Treaty of Paris in 1763, part of the uh, wars that happened, uh, turns out, you know, um, you know, 80 years later type thing, and, and, um, the Franco-Tahitian War, hey guys, we found some more Indians 80 years later, so let's go kill them, right, so then we have the war for the islands, right, somebody has, has navigated to the islands to and fro enough times, Right, to completely map out the archipelago islands and now we're going to go and we're going to stick our French flag all up there. <whistles> so when you sit there and say who are the ancient kings of the Maori? They have a Maori king's list of monarchs, right? Terat Muhata, right? Muhata seems to be the name that carries on. It's a family name, Muhata, right? Potatuo, Potatio, right? So, again, you and me might see this nigga's named himself after potato, ha ha ha, but what is natural? A, a, a potato is what? It's a root. What is he saying by his name? We are the root here. You know, um, when you, the images look kind of funky, right? That's what I should have said. I should have said, uh, other thing. Uh, so here, this is the image that they have of the Maori king, right? So again, he's much darker like those other in images. Look at when they draw him in Albany, they draw him light skin, right? Each image that you can see, he has dark skin, right? Kumodi type frame right or uh right big daddy cane look right but feathered hair so when you say okay the maori kings now right they say this is the maori see still feathered hair still feathered hair so when you say that say the maori now again they're much much different than what these people look like Now, did they root these people out? I don't know. I, I, I don't think so because when you do look around the world 
at the image of the Maori and the different places that they're scattered, they do seem to look uh, all the same. They don't seem like there's just some proxy image of anybody as, uh, you know, stand-ins, you know. Um, and again, you can see uh, the, the Cali uh, stuff uh, that they push with their uh, traditions, right? They, so, again, when you go into the, uh, let's see, so we go into Maori Canaanites, right? No, or Maori in the, uh, in the Bible. So, you know, again, ancient Maori kings is going to give you a pretty good list. Uh, then we go Maori in the Bible. And we ask about Maori in the Bible, they only give you some Mormon shit. That is, there is no, uh, you know, Bible translation into o Oceanic languages. Uh, that's translating the Bible into other people's languages. It does not talk about uh, the Maori specifically. Uh, Meaning, uh, could they be using, like, uh, another name that's connected and somebody's done the homework and they found the connection? Uh, there's nothing that pops up right away. Uh, when you go, are Maori Canaanites, the ancient DNA sheds light on the Maori sediment, right? And the ancient DNA shows Canaanites survived biblical slaughter, blah, 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 blah. You just heard them in the story, we left Tower of Babel before slaughter. We left Babylonian captivity before slaughter. Um, you know, uh, when you sit there and say, oh, in the real world, the DNA says they, they, they survived slaughter too. Like, so when you say he identified Maori with Jews, now it's going to start taking the turn for the unbelievable. So buckle your seatbelts up. Uh, and it says Kenea, Canaan was the first Hawaki, our last Hawaki is, so clearly they're Canaanites, but they're calling themselves Jews. You cannot say that we are the Hawaki, right? And um, again, the Hawa is destruction. And then when you say that Hawaki, the, Ho the Hawaii people, uh, you know, you messed up. They, they, they got themselves on camera before... Uh, before it all ended, before their kingdom fell, they got themselves, they got the natives on camera. So you cannot say you're the original Hawaii people. No, that, that's, that's not going to be upheld by any court. That's why they have you written as natives. All right, so I don't really need the king's list up anymore. Maori Canaanites, um... So again, ancient Canaanite, right? Polynesian, Hawaii, Polynesian, Hawaii, Maori. It just keeps repeating it over and over again. We can go into that, right? Fucking, right? See what it's going to, you know, but it's Wikipedia anyway. It's just, just really looking up shit I already looked up, right? Or, or, or just read. All right. Rapupau, Maori king movement, right? The more it restore the land of Canaan, right? This is at the birthright of the Israelites, Right, the Maori people. So this is in their writing. NZ history, New Zealand history, government. They're calling themselves in their government that they, they are the Israelites. Right? And it would be, no, you, we just read all that cannibalism shit, right? Does it show that, that we read anywhere that say anything about their religion, about God or anything? No, didn't say anything about that. It just claims that there's other other book about them. That these other people have called the Book of Mormon, which claims that they were righteous at one time, but but fell into wickedness and never climbed out of it, and then had to go live in a corner of the world until they were conquered by conquerors. They ain't got no temple. They don't. They don't. They don't sacrifice to them. They don't keep the holy days. Ah, none of their nothing about their culture says that they have any connection to Israelites. So here you have just the repeated same shit, right? Word for word, right? Nor the inhabitants of Medego and her towns, but the Canaanites, right? English Maori Bible, right? Canaan, Canaanites Encyclopedia doesn't tell you anything about the Maori, doesn't, right? Uh, Raupa. Ra'a 
on the hill of Canaan, and Maori fled when they heard the deep underground rumbling. Right? Canaan downs the land of milk and honey and good biking stuff. Right? I, I, so, you know, uh, it's, it's kind of a little mix up, so we'll just keep on moving. Maori Canaanites, I opened up uh, page two on something else because I wanted to read everything on page one. It was kind of interesting. All right. Um, and then you have uh, chapter seven, Ham Shem, right? Maori traditional prophecy is considered the, all right, it, that's the original name of Arizona to be New Canaan, right? So then they're pushing this that they're the Israelites and, all right, but they left at the time of Babel. They didn't leave at the time of, of Joshua. See how that just doesn't make sense? If you understand the importance of the story of Joshua. So you just have a bunch of hearsay claiming to be the Israelites, right? Israelite, the, the boar, the mayor. So a boar is what? A pig. So the Israelites would never use these unclean animals. They wouldn't be using birds. They wouldn't be using pigs. They wouldn't be written in history of eating dinosaurs. Uh, why, why dinosaurs still existed in uh, up to 1500, right? So it's just madness to keep pushing that shit. You're not supposed to ink your ink your skin, right? Let's tattoo ourselves on the face. When you get into all this and down to it, the idea that they're Israelites, it, it just it just it's just not fulfilled by their actions. It's not. So then you get Native American um, Maori search, right, to see what comes up. And a lot of people have done this, right? How similar are the Maori of New Zealand to the Native Americans, right? Right. So this is not some new question. This is on people's mind. It's obvious to people. They're not blind. You know, it's foolish for them to ask this question, but it does reveal that peop what uh, people's thought trend is. Because when they ask this question, they're going to come to a lot of bullshit answers. Because again, who is reading these sites? It's people, it's white people, right? The people that did the same things to the Indians here and did the same things to the, the, the Negroes. So asking them about, oh, you know, it just... You know, it's like it's like it's like asking somebody who, who who enjoys people's suffrage, do you think these other people suffer? You know? And then watching the smile creep on their face, but them outward say, No, I don't think they suffered. What was that woman say? But I have beachfront property now, right? So a lot of people, right, two nations under God, they would have to be living together for you to sit there, right? Two nations under God, right? All right, so. This person says, oh, no comparison. Five other people say, oh, hell of a comparison. This person says, of course, you got to throw the Hawaii's, Hawaiians in, right? Naturally, because they're already the same blood group. So. Sig Seg Inua Grant, right? That almost sounds like that damn cactus, right? You got you just gotta gotta wonder. <laughs> All right, so you know, pretty much it's gonna, it's, you know. So Punjabi Mexican Americans came up, so I thought I'd just clicked on this because when I went on some of that stuff, the Punjabis came up. And you can see what's wrapped around its head, right? Arab. Let me pop this down. Right there, there's one. There you go. Punjabi and Mexicans. Well, did I close that one? Shit. One of these came up and the Punjabi came up. Nah, I forgot how I did that shit before, too. Yeah, I'll show you. See what once the arrows go, or let's see, I can't go back anymore. So I opened the window highlighting Punjabi American. Right? And then you get California's disappearing Punjabi. Right? And so then you put Punjabi 
Now, I don't know what I'm going to get out of this. I didn't try this one yet. Right? Maori, Eurasians, Maori people, Punjabi, Mexican Americans, Indians, Indo Maori. There it is, right there. Indo Maori. Right? Uh, ethnic group of New Zealand of people with mixed Maori. Mixed with what, right? Ki or Sat. Siri Akai, I love the language of Maori. Yeah, it's broken, look, broken. Completely fucking broken. Tell me that's not Babylonian talk. Dude, type it in the bottom, I'll call you a liar. All right? Punjabi. All right, same kind of, just to, if it was Jade, right? Priceless, right? So, Punjabi tattoos. Do I need to go back to the Maori and show you the full body tattoos again? Does he have the whole chest like Punjabi tattoos, Maori tattoos? All right? Come on, peeps. You rolling with me? Same ethnicity. Hadia American Indians, right? This came up in the nations and uh, red cedar zones, right? And red cedar, right? Trees. Going crazy over cedar trees. Going crazy over the cedar trees, right? Where's the tribe located? Right? Alaska, British Columbia, Prince of Wales Island, the Arpeggio, right? So, why is this up on screen, man? Right? Polynesian. Hadassi connection. Because on the page I closed out like an idiot, it connected them all. And what I was doing is highlighting them from that page and popping open new windows. And then it led to the Samoan people. And that's how we got to the Samoan people earlier. And then we have the Negro Hawaiians showing you they clearly got hair exactly like mine. All right? So I'm going to close these out. All right. There's New Zealand history, government, Maori king movement, right? Rapa confiscations. So they confiscated the people's shit, right? Their land, <laughs> right? Everything. There's pages of this. So it's there for you. I'm going to keep going. They talked about the yoke of the Paka'a, right? And this has to do with anybody putting a yoke on them, basically. So what I try to do is see how the Tihamu came back up. I tried to find the yoke of Paka, right? And then here's where they claim the Tiha, right? This is Gabriel, right? Or, excuse me, this is a person that had a vision, and Gabriel came in the vision and instructed them to cast off the yoke of Paka, right? And this is when they got on the boats and left. So, again, when they cast off the yoke of Paka, I'm pretty sure they make the boats. And go to New Zealand. Born in Wasu, South, early uh, 1820, parents of, uh, oh, come on, just give me the damn story. Oh, boy. Their prophet only lasted four years. New religion based on the principle of pioneer, goodness and peace. The T T T U A had a vision of Archangel Gabriel where he was assured that he, oh, good, it's right here, that he was chosen as a prophet to lead the people, casting off the yoke of Baca, the birthright of the Israelites, the Maori people would be restored to New Canaan, New Zealand. So where are they at? They're in America. And they're saying, cast off the yoke of Paka. So the Israelite King Paka is in America putting the yoke on him. So understand, in the Mormon Bible, they're not calling Paka, Paka. And Paka is putting the yoke on the Maori. The Maori are the Nephites. So whoever's kicking the Nephites' ass in the Book of Mormon, is Paka. 
before they cast off the yoke of Pekah, the king of Israel. That means, of course, the king of Israel is in what? America, where they're building the boats at. I told you, looking in this shit, you will discover what you need. And we go to the Paka, right? Paka, right? In the Maori language, it's for New Zealanders, right? Not themselves, primarily of European descent, right? The term also applies to fair-skinned peoples, tourists from other European countries that right or to any non maori now you see that they just everybody's a paka because what they're here to put the yoke on them All right so if paka is the israelite king putting the yoke on the maori then the maori ain't the israelites So, when we go down here, meaning, let's go to meaning. Maori in the Bay, the island, surround district, no doubt about the word, Paka, 19th century. 13th, Ragazera, whatever, uh, the far north, are going to compose a letter to William IV seeking protection from the French, the tribe of Marion. Uh, written in Maori. Uh, Moroni, the letter used the word Paka to mean British European. So again, the Americans are the British Europeans at the time. The Americans break away from the British because they want to go beyond the 13 colonies to the Mississippi River. And then they want to go past the Mississippi River. It says the word Tao means stranger. All right, non-British as shown in the trans. See how the British are not strangers, but the non-British are strangers. Do you understand just by reading that, that verifies everything that we read from the Negro question books? And it shows in the translation of the year of the Maori king to English to the missionary William Ye. To this day, the Maori term for English is Rio Paca. Ha, 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 Why? Rio Grande? What is the Rio for? Maori also use the other terms as Tupula, supernatural, object of fear, strange being, and Kenshu, ghost, and my metal for referring to persons of foreign. All right, because they're always seeing the pale Arabs, i.e. what we call the white people. Who else is going and stealing from them? The power of ghosts, the power of metal. Supernatural gunfire. All right? Fear of objects, blankets, poisoned. Etymology of Paka is unknown. You really don't want to go to the Bible, do you? Pakahana. Pakahaka. Wait. <laughs> e -u -u. -ka -ha -ke -ha. Almost sounds like Kame Kame Ka, right? Which refer to an oral tale that a mythical human being like with fair skin and hair who possessed canoes made reeds which changed magically into sailing vessels the same way you guys made reeds so we just read about the people that were making reeds and they would make they would use the reeds for boats that's the other indian group in california now if you're denying this and you just watch me talk about this the last fucking two weeks straight then your mind is poisoned we first read about those people using the reeds because they were so long, they would wrap dead bodies in them. They wouldn't wrap them well. Then they used those reeds, pitched them with tar, and made sailing vessels. Magically. Right? So what we left out here was the tar. And then it's not so magical because bitumen seals things from water. Salt water, to be in fact. So... Oh, man, this is just... They're going to do everything to not say the king of Israel. All right.
cop, white pig. <laughs> unwelcome stranger. Those are completely different. Signifies white pig, unwelcome. Unwelcome white pig stranger. I mean, you might as well string that into a constructive sentence. It's it's meaning the same thing, all right? When somebody's questioned, what did you mean by that? And they got six people about to beat them up. I mean, stranger. I mean, unwelcome person. When, again, when they have the others outnumbered, they're calling them pig. Right? Attitudes of the term. Yeah, so. The history. Why wouldn't the history up front? So, see, the history goes in the history between the two peoples. It does not go to the history of Paca, cultural identity of Paca, right? Anglophone, oh boy. British origins. See, look at that. Just said, Paca is Israelites. In the, in the only way we know how to say it, to prove it right now. Through the history of British, King James. Negro King James said, these British are the Jacobites, the Benjamites, and the Levites. Right? Identify as distinct form of complementary, right? To those of their, what? British origins. And those of other Anglo. If I type in Adrian's last name, it's going to say Anglo. That dude look like me. All right? So, I, I, there's no first point. I don't. I, I already, that's that's what I'm looking for. That's the connection I'm looking for. Remember, I have that other book that shows you from the kings of Israel to the what? The kings of Britain. And they show all the connections. So, you know, it's not going to get any better for us. You know, uh, you know, yoke of Pakao over the Maori people, they're not going to, it's not going to get any better. I've, I've been down this road, All right? Leads back to Pakao, and you got, you, you saw how we found it. We have to know other parts of history to know what they're saying. So then you have a Pakaang, Pakaang band of Indians, All right? Now, <clears throat> this doesn't mean well, one thing or the other, it just means we have a band of Indians calling themselves the Pakaang, right? And then when they show themselves as the Pakaang, right? And when we, this is whom they look like, Pakaang Powwow and Tumelica. If you tell me this is the Pakaang tribe, this says original Pakaang, those are, those are half, all those people are white. There's a few people that almost look indigenous in there. I'm not buying that. I'm not buying that just because you guys sit around the dinner table enough time saying that we're one, right? And only three people at that table have connected blood. And there's 15 people there. Just because you guys trick each other every night, that don't mean the rest of us have to go for that. When people say negro and i raise my head that don't mean my sons is gonna raise their head they have my blood they have my image they might not have the shared negro image <laughs> well, there's nothing i could do all i can do is teach them you are this by blood but not by image you know, who, who gives a shit about image? Image is rarely talked about in this Bible. It's, talk, it's talked about so little people hide their name and it's enough to be hidden for a century. So, when you get Pachanga, uh, excuse me, Pakanga people, and you type in Negro, 
you know, they're going to out some posers, identity, identity theft, and you'll see this face, it'll just keep popping up, like, over and over again, so this person made a lot of documents saying that they are Pachanga, and the Pachanga were like, no, you're not. They were like, no, you're not, right? Scholar who has made a name, right? right? It's Smith, right? So, right? Multicultural white supremacists, right? Same person who's using identity. Yeah, body. Let's just stick to the subject. It's fascinating. Um, so when you go into the Negro uh, version, or are there Negro versions um, of what we're going to be titling the Pachanga people, this is the closest that you're going to get. All right. That does not mean that this person wouldn't be considered Negro today. I'm just saying, you know, uh, you play that game if you want to. I've seen plenty of black Indians that don't have Negro hair, but have that face. So, you know, it's not my argument anymore. I've, I've moved on beyond that. When we deal with these son of son of son of, and it's all by surname son of is surname so there's no it's easy we just deal with the surname you deal with the natives of california they show you a lot of different types of native people you do not see the words indigenous up there at least not yet so just keep that in mind all right i don't know what people are looking for when they look at these um if i've done the studies and i know that all the people that look like me should be from britain then I'm not going to expect them to be in the indigenous look. I've looked and I've read the history. I know that the people that look like me should be on the East Coast fighting for uh, Eastern states inside and outside of the 13 colonies. Um, at the point of the West was Judah. The, it, we don't have the, the, the visual records. Everything has happened at that point. When, uh, when this stuff comes up, you know, um, the camera is invented in the 1800s. You're pushed out of there by then, you know, um, what did I, what did we come up again? You know what? I can't even say that. What did I come up with today? Uh, is her name Dizzy? Biddy. Biddy Mason. Let me put my, let me taste my shoe. Bridget Biddy Mason, right? They claim she was born enslaved, but her last name's Mason. Get the hell out of here. She, so this encourages me to go into this one, but she is the founder of, let's see. Her legacy, I want to make sure this is right. Californian real estate entrepreneur, and she's the founder of uh, the First Methodist Church of Los Angeles. Another page claims she was damn near the founder of Los Angeles itself. Uh, a wealthy Los Angeles landowner. Again, man, pushing this slave. She was an indentured servant when her family feed themselves what whatever they would however they found the process to free themselves making money they continued to make money once they didn't have any more debts to pay then they became wealthy again if you're in Britain in, in Britain and you have the patents for making shoes and it's a machine that does it blah 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 if you're in Britain you have the patent for the sewing machine and then your family members that are over here in America, indentured servants or not, then have the power to contact their family and say, send me the patent so I can have those parts made. Or order me this or order me that and send it to me because it's a joint union of families making money in both countries up until insurrection at individual major cities. 
for the New York dental riots, dentist riots. on screen earlier on the other video now it's not going to come up so eight it was eighteen six there it is 1863 draft riot it's called the dental riots right this is insurrection if i type in insurrection you're going to see riot 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 insurrection of north carolina riot 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 you have a race riot in L.A. They bring everything out. They bring fire hoses, dogs, right? They got the military behind the cops. Why? Because that's how they stole the city from you. They're keeping you from taking the cities back. Everything starts in California. If they win in, rot, in, in Watts, in these Watts riots, they'll win in Chicago. Stop them here and now. What do they do? They claim today... They claim today they had undercover cops putting bombs in the cities. The time bomb comes from what? The riots? So you mean Negroes who are, you know, affected by lack of education, they can make pipe bombs and now they can add timers to it? So... It gets out of control when you get into it. You know, it's going to slide into, let's get back to this. It's going to slide into the Hebrew Kings list. Then we're going to find Paka. I'm going to skip that. I'm going to skip it. Then we need Syria, Genesis 10, so we can understand who Syria is. Who Syria is. And we go to Genesis 10. We go over here. We have resin between, right, and out of the land of Asher. And resin. Now, we all know resin. Now we go over here. Now, Syria comes from Aram. So he is Shem. Oh, where'd my link go? We weren't that far. What happened? Syria. Oh, we skipped some shit. Let's go backwards. Okay, Pachanga people. So we typed in Pachanga, and then they give us this. Right? It's the closest we're going to get. Then we get King Paka. Pop Paka open. No, we skipped that one. Then we get uh, Syria, Genesis 10. Syria, we find out it's Aram's son. He is a Shemite. So when we see uh, Uts, right? Uts is uh All right Nehor and Milka had sons, Uts, right? U T Z. All right, sons of Aram. Everybody's Aram son. Shit. Right. So we want Uts indigenous, right? And then they give me some U T S, right? And so then we don't want that. We're just gonna go to Uds, right? Uds indigenous Indians. And uh, basically, you know, these things are going to be interchangeable. The T, the Z, I mean, excuse me, the S and the Z is interchangeable. So instead of Uts, we're going to go to Uts. Still making the same damn sound, right? And then you can see people that have melanated faces. Melanated faces, melanated faces, right? Long sand, melanated face. Now you got African Americans. Now you see what happens? I type in Uts. 
indigenous indigenous indians and here you come right here's some fakes here's some real you got trick buddy see these chalk tall negro faces they just don't got straight hair no more Guess whom they mingle with? I got that picture of Hawaii with those people with the afro up again. So this hair turned into afros. Hmm? There's Choctaw. You see all these Negroes today say, I'm Choctaw. Got the evidence, got the last name. The faces match the hair don't. Why? Because they interbred with us. All right. See what I say? Oots, and they give me Missouri. Now, the whole time we've been in the West, the West, the West, the West, the West, I start typing in names of Shem Indians. Shem Indians, they start giving me the West. I mean, excuse me, the East. Where is Missouri? Well, it's kind of in the center. But it's close. It's what? West of the Mississippi. But it's right at the Mississippi, right? So I hope you're understanding what's going on. Once I start looking for the Syrians, just like I said, re remember, I'm just reading shit to you. So when I said, just like I said, that's the kind of not fair. In Arkansas, can't spell, had Arab teachers. You have what? Syria. The head of Samira is Damascus. Damascus, Arkansas. So when I tell you, it's here. And people want to come up, well, I'm going to unsubscribe. Listen, action speech, well, actually, no. If you unsubscribe, I'm not going to know any difference. I don't check these numbers, and I really don't care. I don't know you personally. The person that said, I'm going to unsub. That's not going to bother me. What's going to bother me is the internet come down and you say the shit that you learned 10 years ago. That you were brainwashed in high school with. When you can type this stuff on your own phone and see it for yourself. They can't afford to proxy everybody. It's only important to proxy, proxy you and to proxy me. Because they don't have a bunch of people pretending to be a bunch of different people. They only have Canaanites and different fucking Canaanites pretending to be other people. Yes, it's a lot, but it ain't everybody. Right? From the Hamites that built Babel down to the Canaanites, man. So here's that picture Algonquin. You see it in these faces. That's why they eradicate these pictures. These images don't look nigga enough. And you see these people in your societies. They don't look tough enough. <laughs> Those are the oot. Trust me, I have eyes. I see when people are treated like shit all the time. So, oot is, of course, shem. And then if that's true, then the Arapaho, right? Well, who are the Arapaho? In the Battle of Arapa, it's Assyria versus Babylonians. Now, if these Hamites built Babel, then who are the Assyrians? So, all we have to do
Asher from Genesis 10, not from the 12 tribes. And there you have them right there. Shem Alam Asher. Our fat child, our faxid, Lud and Aram. Aram had Uz. And at the Peleg, this was the time the land started to divide. So some of Shem's children could be on other continents, all separated by rivers, then the land separates. And then Asher waves goodbye to our fat child, our fat child waves goodbye to Lot. You get what I'm saying? We do not have the time machine to see where somebody was standing when the land divided. We do not have the time machine to see which Indians from which groups decided to run across the land bridge before it separated. It'd be nice. And we'd be know-it-alls. But we don't have that shit right now. So when we go to Asher is Assyria from Genesis 10, we find out directly that Asher is Shem. When we look at the Arapaho, they are part of the Battle of Arapa. Arapa being Assyrian and Babylonians. Now, you and me at this point are guessing the Arapaho are either the Babylonians or they're Asher. Now, the Babylonians win this match. We've already read this. Now, you the viewer, so that means Tigler Pilsless, the third, Pilsler, drink, beer, L, Ale, Yisra Ale, right, Assyrian Empire, right, now this image, where was that image at, son of a punk? Where's that horse image at? Right? So, so these are just what? What are these images? What ethnicity are these people? Hmm? If they're Assyrian, they're from Asher, they're from Shem. Battle of Arapa between the Babylonians driving the Assyrians back to Little Zab. Now, what is Little Zab? It's a river that originates the Tigris. See, just do it without the names. So, I don't think the Little Zab is biblical. So that don't seem like we're going to find that, right? So it says, in doing so, capturing many Assyrian prisoners, the horses, the chariots. Next year, Cyrus, the king of the Medes, came in and defeated the Assyrians and conquered Arapa. Now you see that says there? It says the Babylonians drove the Assyrians back. But the Medes came in and defeated the Assyrians. That would, the way that's written, that means even though the Babylonians drove the Assyrians back, that just means the Babylonians won. That don't necessarily mean the the Babylonians are a rapper. Now the Medes come in and they defeat the Assyrians. Now it it makes sense to think, and when they beat the Assyrians. They conquered Arapa. So Arapa belongs to the Assyrians. Okay, so the Arapa people are Assyrians. 
Now, like I said the other day, now that shit makes sense. When you put the Assyrian flag, even though they have black now, the flag, the Assyrian flag has blue. Red, white, black, red, white, blue. So, from this writing, you can see yourself. Even in the other video where I tried to, to say the Assyrians were, excuse me, when I said the Arapaho are Arapa, but it said the Babylonians won, and I was confused. It means that the Babylonians won, but they pushed them back into their land of Arapaho. That is why these people are were, of, of Arapa. That's why these people are called Arapaho today. Or instead of Arapaite. Or, again, Assyrian. So, <clears throat> chasing the Nephite leads to all this, right? So, the Assyrians, then it leads to the Kohi. We're not going to do the Kohi. Uh, then it leads to the Cheyenne. Then it leads... Now, while I'm looking up the Cheyenne, pretty sure it was under the Cheyenne. It's under one of these. Looking up one of these things, right? Okay, so looking up the Cheyenne, then they give it away with all the ancient names. So these are the ancient names, right? You see right there, it says Set. And you see right there, it says Set. And you see right there, it says Egypt's, Egyptian Set. And you see right there, it spells shit like Egyptians do. Tahasi, like Tallahassee. I'm not saying that's what it says. I'm just saying. Tahasi. Hesi Tahasi. Tahaseta. Heseta Hesi. Taseti. Right? The more I do this, the more it will build itself because it's a language I'm accustomed to. I have somehow I can speak this Babylonian broken syllable shit. Right? And so then you highlight that, you you right click it, you do search Google for that shit, and you go over here, and then you search Google for it, and then you add of Egypt, right? And then all this Arabic shit comes up. You know I can't read this, but you know right now I'm right. I know right now I'm right. Well, I knew when I put this up before I was right. I still feel that feeling. It's not as strong now because, you know, I've already discovered it, that initial discre Okay, you know what I'm saying, right? Hopefully. Polynesian and ancient America, pre-Columbian transoceanic contact theories. All right, so there's theories right now. They haven't found the evidence. Polynesian, ancient America, Mormon, and then it goes back to the boat builders, saying that they came to American land, they built the boats, and then went to New Zealand. Thank you. Two and a half hours. Shalom, everybody. Have a good night. Have a good day. Just be good. Be righteous. Haya, haya.